This time on Railroad Australia. Oh my God. Bernie Baker's dodging floods and fans <laughs> to fulfil his streamliner dreams. This is exciting stuff. The coal wagon turned grain train springs a leak. Everything's going against us. And Jeff Wilson with his massive ore train. Everything's working a lot harder than it normally should be. Battles the unforgiving outback as they fight to get home. Come on, I'll just get home. They are the kings of the Australian outback. You've got to concentrate all the time. Some of the biggest trains in the world. If things go wrong with these things, it normally makes a big mess. On epic journeys. It's a bomb on wheels. Up through a hostile continent. Holy crap! Have a look at all this water. A nation depends on them. Well good boys, get in there. And the teams that keep these metal monsters on the tracks. You do it! Hauling huge loads of food, freight and mineral riches across incredible distances. We are out in the middle of nowhere, that's for sure. Big trains. It'll be a massive challenge to us. Big country. No one's ever done it. We'll see how we go. Legendary Outback train driver Bernie Baker is in deep water. There she is. How you doing? Back to Why? The line's closed between here and Stock of England. In the worst flooding for 17 years, the line to his destination is closed. So once in a generation flooded Forbes. You haven't seen anything like it since 1990. It just happened to be right about now, didn't it? You know, it couldn't like happen next week. This time, Bernie Baker is on a haulage mission with a difference. It was my hairbrain idea. What about a streamliner event? That was over two years ago, so I've been running with it ever since. Bernie's vision is to bring 19 classic streamliner engines together for a charity event at Goulburn's Roundhouse Rail Yard. It promises to be three days of locomotive madness. First time a streamliner event's ever been put together in Australia. But first, the locos have to get there. We'll get eight units over here in one hit to Goulburn and the other units are going to trickle in from the uh, eastern side. Once again, Bernie is at the helm of B61, the Bernie Baker, one of only a handful of streamliners still being used commercially. Smile the mummy. <laughs> Bernie Baker loves the Bernie Baker, it'd be fair to say, and uh, yeah, she's a good girl, we've heard all the sheep. <laughs> Streamliners began in the 1930s and were the first to be built aerodynamically. They ushered in a new era of high-speed train travel. They're all significant because they all came into service to replace steam on the main line. They're a dying breed, these Streamliners, so the idea is to get them together while we still can and for everyone to enjoy them. Seven, eight, two, they're over. Yep, Helping Bernie is 17-year-old apprentice Matt Ellsmore. I wouldn't pick another trainer over Bernie. He's taught me well. He's taught me how to work and it's not 100% serious all the time. Thank you, I think. Hopefully one day I can become a driver, but that's still years away. Geez, he's only been with Southern Shore or Railroad about a month. He's already been thrown in the deep end, but he loves it. And it's getting deeper every minute, with rising floodwaters threatening their 500 kilometre run from Lithgow to Goulburn. People have been out of their homes, they've had their homes flooded and everything. But it's not just the floods that could derail Bernie's dream. So this weekend, you know, we've put in several thousands of dollars of our own money. If the fans don't materialise, Bernie could lose the lot. The question people keep asking me is, how many people are you expecting? It's like, I don't know, it's never been done before. He'll need more than just the die-hard spotters that follow his every move. It's a train enthusiast. Gunzels. I don't even think it's in the dictionary. Is it in the dictionary, Matt? Not officially, no. No. Rail fans are much better term. It's been around a lot longer. 
The Gunzels is pretty derogatory in my opinion. There's, there's one up here. Finally, Bernie has reached Parks. He's halfway to his destination. But the news on the flooding ahead isn't good. I heard a couple of weeks, but anyway. I heard a couple of weeks. I loved you till now. Oh. And they're saying in there that uh, they've heard a couple of weeks. Oh God, I don't want to think about it. Bernie now faces a nervous overnight wait. Oh. If the water doesn't subside, he'll be a no-show and his own Streamliner Festival will be in ruins. We're in all sorts of strife at the moment. All clear. In New South Wales, Tim Elderton has more grain to shift than he can handle. This has been a massive grain harvest this year in New South Wales. Pressure's on to uh, reactivate a lot of old trains. Southern Short Haul Railroad has delivered him 80 old wagons to tackle the problem. The ship's on its way in, got to get 150,000 tonnes of grain to the port. But this rolling stock wasn't built to carry grain. They were designed to haul coal. For this job, they must be re-engineered. If there's a grain spill, we're leaving money along the track. Um, we're only taking three, aren't we? Uh, it's a gamble. SSR has invested $1.2 million in the project. So the pressure's on, we've not done this before. We started behind the eight ball. Fingers crossed, we'll get the 18 wagons out on time. First, they must rebuild the dump doors. It's about half a ton of steel down to uh, the bottom doors on these wagons and uh, make them grain tight. Hence, we've had to employ an extra 10 guys, half of which are metal fabricators. David Martin is a welder on the conversion. Uh, it's about anywhere between 5 to 15 mil and we're shutting that down to three. With the final seal on top, it'll be down to nothing. If there's any break in the seal, it's coming out on the track. Unlike coal, grain must be protected from the rain. Another team are making waterproof lids. Massive fiberglass panels have been imported from Canada. They come in uh, four sections, they're all bolted together, and as they build them, they just lift them up and uh, plonk them onto the wagons. The key to success will be pneumatic doors that are opened and closed with a switch. The pneumatic cylinder needs to work properly. Nothing worse than when the hatch doesn't open. So if it doesn't open, there's a whole wagon that we uh, can't load grain. After 10 days of hard work. It's been a trial and error. The whole process to make sure it works. The conversions are complete. We've had to pull off a miracle and get these 18 wagons out so the train can start running. Now the real test begins. Tim will send the 18 wagons 400 kilometres to a grain loading silo in northern New South Wales and then 350 kilometres southeast to port at Newcastle. But just 15 minutes before departure. Uh, we've got an air leak that I'm fixing up. We've got too many leaks, not enough pressure to open the bottom dump doors or the top roof hatches, which is just going to cause major delays. Tim's facing more than a delay. If the air leaks can't be fixed, SSR's $1.2 million investment will be losing money already. In the gorges here, the temperatures get to 50 degrees in the middle of summer. So that makes the locos work, you know, they're working hard, so they get really, really hot. And that's not a good thing on a hill like this. In the searing temperatures of the Pilbara, Jeff Wilson is driving an iron ore mega train 
one of the longest and heaviest in the world. It's a monster of a train, 250 uh, cars fully loaded of iron ore, 2.75 kilometres long. Jeff's on the return leg of a 600 kilometre journey. On the way over, the wagons were empty, but now, filled to the brim with pay dirt, he needs help to even move an inch. We got um, two locos at the back of the train to help us get up through the hills. That's an extra 9,000 horsepower. You know, and we need that to, to get the train moving, and because you know it's 37,000 ton of heavy train. Jeff began today's journey at the crack of dawn. There's not many places in Australia where you got news coming to work like this. Yeah, it's awesome. He'll be travelling from the Solomon Mine Hub north to Port Hedland, where the 37,000 tonnes of ore will be shipped to the world. We've got to take it 300 kilometres through the desert, back to civilization today, and down to the port. Jeff's done this journey many times, but never takes the brutal outback for granted. With family waiting for him at home, he's hoping the last shift of his two-week roster will go smoothly. Looking forward to going to see the family, you know, it's really great. You know, with the daughters and the, and the wife and that. And it's just fun. We do some camping, you know, go down to the winery sometimes, whatever. But ahead, oncoming traffic threatens to derail Jeff's reunion plans. I'm already aware you've got a set of bankers already at a standard by waiting for the entry to come in. An empty ore train coming in the opposite direction is moving into a siding to let Jeff pass, but not fast enough. Because we're on a hill, um, I'm trying to time the run so that the empty gets in first and we won't have to stop because, as you can see now, we're, if I stop on this hill, it's going to be very hard to try and move it, take off from it, even with the other bankers behind it, you know, because, you know, it is 37,000 tonne. If Jeff's forced to stop his journey back to civilization, he'll be off to a very shaky start. Come on, Alan, get the road. Pre-dawn, Parks, New South Wales. In the worst floods to hit the area for two decades, Bernie's had a stroke of luck. The line to Goulburn has been temporarily opened after floodwaters receded. We've got to take this window and run because if something happens in the next couple of hours, then uh, we might not get out. So we're in the lack of the gods and running on an ad hoc path at the moment. He's making a break for it before the waters surge again. All right. Bye. Oh. Control Delta 876. We're right to come out of the number one up by C frame. So if we could have that releasing into the platform for starters, please over. Yeah, not a problem at all. If he doesn't get his streamliners through now, his charity event for Starlight Children's Foundation will be in ruins. So I'm usually relieved now we're departing. Very, very nervous times yesterday. As well as being the organizer of the show. He's hauling eight of the 19 classic Streamliner Locos that will be on display for the fans. For the event to succeed, Bernie must be there. Oh, look at all this rain. More rain threatens to wash away the tracks completely. Stressful times, hair pulling times. You know, I never had a grey hair in my head until I started uh, working on this project. Now they've been ordered onto a loop line to stop and give way to an oncoming train. Can you ask him how far away BA6 is, please, mate? Every delay increases the risk of being caught by the floodwaters. Air control, we're away in the loop. Thanks, right, we'll get the bloke past you and get back here soon. Hey Matt, put it on WB and give him a roll, boy. Yeah, already on it. Yeah, your roll boy looks good there, 3BA6, and you're flashing on the back. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm all good. Have a good day. 
Yeah, you used to it, see, like. Whenever you pass another train, you try and give them a roll by. So just see that their train's all fine and not making any strange noises. And that they have the marker on the back to show that that's the end of the train. If you don't have that, you're possibly missing wagons. So it's important that it's there. But there's nothing in the handbook to deal with what's coming next. Oh my God. Have a look at all this water. But just coming into Forbes, where they've had all the issues with uh, overflowing reservoirs, declared a natural disaster a couple of days ago. Holy crap! If we stop, we may not get going again. Iron ore train driver Jeff Wilson must keep his train moving. On a steep grade, Getting 37,000 tonnes rolling again would be almost impossible without help. It's a long train and a heavy train, big snake in the Pilbara, and we, the last thing we want to do is stop right here. But there's an empty 2.7 kilometre train coming in the opposite direction. That empty's coming in now. So he's coming into the siding, and we're there, so he's got another, he's got to sneak in behind that loco, the bankers. To avoid stopping, he needs the oncoming train to move entirely into the siding. But the manoeuvre takes time. I'm just taking taking up here steady, uh, just holding back a bit, wait for the empty to get in. We should not have to stop. Finally, the track ahead is clear, but without authorisation from control, he'll be forced to stop. Come on, now, oh, hang on. Come on, now. Hang on. seconds to go. It's crunch time. Jeff has his hand on the brake. Oh, he's got a... That's good. <laughs> he just gave us the road in time because I was about to stop on this hill. So we're back up in eight full power now and uh, we only... We didn't lose much speed at all. You know, it worked out really well as a cross. Now Jeff faces the Chichester Rangers, a labyrinth of deep gorges and sharp rises. To keep up momentum, he'll need to finesse his four locos and their combined 18,000 horsepower. Gorgeous, we're coming through now. It's the one that worries me the most because of, uh, of the train stopping. You know, we've been going about 50 k's now, 60 k's uphill, and uh, we're down to 17 kilometres an hour. We've lost a lot of speed, and it's been working for so long. If 37,000 tonnes of train stall here, getting it moving again will be mission impossible. Do the other one on the, the other end. Yeah. With their scheduled departure just 15 minutes away, Tim needs the air leaks fixed on SSR's newly converted wagons. If he can't, the pneumatic doors will be stuck fast and no grain can be loaded. Uh, they get moisture in them, creates rust, and then the rust wears on the seal and causes a leak. It's the last one. It's not leaking now. Finally, the 18 converted wagons leave for the grain loading facility, 400 kilometres away. At this point in time, we've got no air leaks. The, everything on those wagons are working as they should. Bearing in mind, it's a maiden voyage, so Murphy's going to be around. Waiting at the grain silos is Gavin Slater, and the news isn't good. Massive storms, and you can't load in storms, it's too dangerous. And it's probably dropped over an inch of rain already. Gavin is the driver in charge of loading the train. His eyes and ears will be his son's. Tyler and Brody. Tyler's just come out of the uh, safe working school. I've been working with Brody now. He's been on the job 12 months. It's good. Very proud of him. But when the train arrives, they're faced with an immediate problem. One of the wagon's hatches is stuck open. Did you try the other side? 
Yeah. Roof hatch won't shut. And rain will get in and contaminate the grain if we leave it open. How did you go, mate? If they can't fix it, the train will have to be rearranged with the faulty wagon moved to the back. Receiving, Dad? Receiving, Tyler. Yeah, it's not bad, you know. But the clock is ticking, and they need to get loaded and get going. It's terrible, isn't it, my gosh? It's all hands on deck to find a solution. How are they going with the toll? Not sure yet. Right, mate. The problem with the air leak has come back to haunt them. Yeah, I'll be coming back, mate. Apparently there was issues with this wagon yesterday and this game before they left. Why didn't they leave it? They were going to leave it, that's what I was told. Yeah, and it can't be loaded, I know. No. Driver Gavin has a tough call to make to the SSR boss. A uh, roof hatch um, is no good, mate. Yeah, the, the air is charging, but there's a blockage somewhere. Just letting you know, mate, it won't, it won't be loaded today. One wagon down without a single grain loaded. And now the rain hits, and hits hard. Oh, my God. Holy snapping duck. Bernie is entering the most flooded section of his journey. His dream of hosting Australia's first ever Streamliner train event is in danger of being washed away. People from overseas have already arrived for this event. It's got to happen. Oh, that house is flooded. That one's on high ground. His shed's flooded. Oh, I've never seen like this at all. The ballast supporting the tracks is disintegrating. Trouble is the ground. Water locked. The water's got nowhere to go, it just sits on top. If nearly a thousand tonnes of antique locos hit a weakened part of the line, Bernie could be derailed. I'm myself. Bit my pants, you know, so it's a, it's a worry. Up ahead, the final hurdle. A swollen river has all but overwhelmed a bridge. Minute by minute now, it's all coming together. But for Matt, an apprentice's work is never done. Well, certainly an apprentice's job in the old days. If you didn't bring a billy to work, the driver could actually would refuse to take you. The first billy I bought to work was a tin billy. And the driver told me if I'd bring that billy back on the second night, he'd throw it out the window and be still hanging onto the handle. Because tin billy's rust will take, take the old driver's tea. Thanks, Matt. Yum. Cafe B61. <laughs> the weather has held, and as Bernie Baker in the Bernie Baker finally nears their destination of Goulburn, die hard train spotters are out in force. The rail fans are cleaning up today, mate. I think it'll be like flies on a fresh on me on the next few days. Hell, oh, here comes another one, here comes another one. They're all scrambling for the next bridge. The fans are growing, as does their desperation to find the perfect spot. Have a look at them all lined up down here. Hell. Everyone's after the best photo. 
and some will risk anything to get it. It's a kid. The locos are getting hot, we're working the out trying to get up the top here and hopefully, you know, nothing goes wrong because the last thing we want to do is be stuck in the middle of it. Jeff is dragging 37,000 tonnes of train up a 60 kilometre hill with two 4,000 plus horsepower locos at the front and two pushing from the rear. It's a sharp incline and down. It's uh, the steepest grade we've got on this whole track here, from here on this track to from here to the port. And uh, I use more percentage of brakes on that than anywhere else on this on this trip. If the train's going to snap. That's where it, that's where it can happen. The crest of this hill, where half the train is one side and half on the other, puts intense pressure on the wagon links. If you're coming through the gorges here and your train parts and you've broke um, a coupling, that's what holds them together. So you've got to either wait for a gang crew to come and help you or another driver to drive out. But it could be up to two to four hours before you actually get going again. So you've lost half, half your day just for, what, for one incident that happened with your train. Each train is holding two million dollars worth of ore. So delays will cost the company big time. Traction motors are getting a lot hotter. Everything's working a lot harder than it normally should be, but it's just doing that to try and get us through the hills. Just got out of the gorge now, so that, that's really good so far. The driver of the two banker locos at the rear signs off. Roger, thanks for that, Eric. And have a good day and we're a bit back, mate. Thanks for that. Now, now that Eric on the bankers has cut off, now it's like riding a 37,000 tonne roller coaster down this hill. You know, down to the bottom. It's awesome. It may be a downhill run, but Jeff still has hurdles ahead. And when we come through the gorges, we're going to hit a, the Great Northern Highway that comes straight out in front of us as the gorges end, and uh, hopefully there's no trucks going across there. 35 metre road trains regularly use this highway. If a crossing warning system were to fail, a collision could be deadly. Just Danny, I'm on this uh, Delta 778, mate. Bernie is now only moments away from his destination, the Goulburn Roundhouse, and the realisation of his streamliner dream. But excited fans are threatening to bring it all to an end. I think you stop at the platform for about five or so minutes. It's a kid. Just walk out and stay in the middle of the track? Eh. What an idiot. If an accident happens, it's not just Bernie's charity event that will be over. Lives will be lost. When I look at him as we went past, he looks familiar as one of the other people taking photos around him. He just walked out and stood there. Bernie finally sees his destination. Home stretch, pretty much. Exciting stuff. So cool. We made it. Unreal. How yeah, good, Matthew? Very good. Good to see that roundhouse. The Goulburn Roundhouse will serve as the Coliseum, where 19 streamliner engines will battle it out for the affections of train enthusiasts from far and wide. Two years in the making, we're here. It's a big moment for Bernie, train driver and dad. Oh, the kiddies have come down. 
Oh, oh, oh. how good is this? <laughs> my six-year-old twins, Stuart and Megan, and my darling wife, Trish. She, oh, there she is. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> how cool. We, we got it. And he's thankful for the support of his young apprentice. We'll head up to Loco now, yep. get the other three engines, put them all together, yep. then we'll come back down here. So, yep. All right? Yep. Uh, control gave us a call earlier and just said to fulfil the order, so oh, that's all done. Of course, all right. No worries all at all. All done. Matt just gets in and, and gets the job done, you know, like, I'm very proud of him. He's, uh, yeah, he's done a good job, doing a good job. Well, we made it! Made it! <laughs> Bernie has successfully outrun once-in-a-generation floods to get his vintage streamliners to the roundhouse. But now, the ugly weather is threatening to play catch-up. If it keeps the punters away, Bernie will struggle to raise the money for charity and, worse, lose thousands of dollars he's advanced to make it all happen. The right. It's the right. What do you do? So we'll just shut it out at the end when we finish loading. In northern New South Wales, the coal truck to grain wagon conversion experiment is showing signs of going wrong. Already one of the wagon's lids won't close. It's not really much you can do. It's got to be sent back to Lithgow to be Rectified the problem, rectified in the air somewhere. A ship is waiting for the grain. All right, mate, ready when you are. All right, then, yeah, you're clear back here. With a break in the bad weather, driver Gavin wants to get started. Right, mate, coming back. All right, I've got about uh, two and a half wagons and I'll pull you up to the end of the chute. But it's a slow process, creeping along at just two kilometres per hour. Okay, we're going about 20 foot. Gavin is totally reliant on his sons Brody and Tyler at the back of the train to be his eyes. Red light there, Dad. Red light there, boys. At last, the grain starts to flow. Yeah, we're loading the grain into the wagon now, and um, the chute doesn't swing all the way into the wagon, so you've got to go. So I think it's about four moves a wagon. Coming back, mate, over. Each wagon holds 65 tonnes of grain. Ten tonnes a minute flies through the chute. But it's still not quick enough for Gavin. It'll take about another hour and a half to load the train, then a half an hour to shunt. Next wagon, but you got to open that door first. As the wagons fill, the new pneumatic lids work smoothly. Right, I bring it back steady, Dad. The $1.2 million coal truck conversion right might pay off yet. Red light, mate. But then, a massive storm hits. Probably want to close that lid. If they stop loading now, they will risk missing the ship. Carry on, and they risk ruining the grain. Did you want me to wind this suit up and close this lid for a bit? Yeah, How many have we got done? Uh, one and a half. Oh yeah, mate. Uh, they stopped loading because of the rain. It's too heavy down the back. And too much water getting into the um, wagon, so we stopped loading. It's um, mostly downhill from now on. We'll just be using the train brake a lot more. We don't really know what's ahead of us. Jeff is at the front of a monster 2.7 kilometre juggernaut, travelling 80 kilometres an hour downhill.
towards a truck crossing. You've got big semis coming across in front of you there. You're coming off a blind hill. You've got lights that protect you, but it's like a blind spot to us because, you know, the trucks are barreling through there and if the lights are, all, are working all the time, that's OK, and they see it, they stop. But if the lights malfunction, we can't really see it until we get on there. If he needs to stop, it'll take at least two and a half minutes and 1.5 kilometres of track. Time and space he doesn't have. I see a semi coming down towards us now. No, he's gone past now, he's well, well, he's, he's all clear of us, so he's happy and I'm happy, we're all happy, <laughs> happy chappies. <laughs> Although Jeff is now on the last leg, his troubles are not over. That entry train we just crossed back there at the siding, he's, uh, he's come through the hot wheel detector and has come up with a cat one which could be a brake block locked on the wheel, it could be a really hot axle, so now he's got to pull up his train and uh, walk back to find out where the drama is. In this unforgiving landscape, Jeff's on standby in case he needs to assist. It does get up to 47, 48 degrees, 50 degrees out here. You don't want someone walking around out there in the heat in the middle of the day like this. You can dehydrate very quickly, you know, and while, you know, snakes around and stuff like that, or you could fall off the, it's pretty sort of cliffy there. You could, the last thing you want to do is slip off the edge of that. So um, we'll just have to wait and see how he goes and what the problem was. The other driver has a long walk to check the fault. I heard the problem with the, with the other loco now. It's 204 cars back from the front loco. So that's about uh, two kilometres each way. You know, that's so it's four, about four kilometres. The driver has to walk back to check out that that um, problem with it, whether it's isolated or uh, the brakes could be stuck on the wheel, we're not sure. I hope he takes some water with him. <laughs> it's just come through on the radio that that driver's walked back and uh, inspected it. What it was was a hot wheel, but um, when he put a, a temperature gauge on it, it wasn't as hot as when it was first read, so the train control's quite happy to let that train run now and proceed, so he's, he's happy, he's on, he's on his way now, and he's back on the loco, out, you know, out of the hot sun and that, and um, he's on his way to the mine, so he'll be relieved with that as well. All right again, we're on the move. Not far to go now, about another 50 k's, and we'll get off and go and have a cold one. <laughs> At last, Jeff and his 2.7 kilometre, 37,000 tonne train has made it to the port, ready to offload the $2 million of iron ore. It's a good achievement, like, you know, to get from A to B and get it down here safely in one piece, all helping out and doing our bit for the company. With the job done, he can now turn his attention to home and his loved ones. Looking forward to going to see the family, you know, we, we grew and bond, just being together is great. During one of the biggest harvests, oh. SSR's modified grain train is in a storm of trouble. It does get a bit scary, and especially at the back there, and if the lightning gets too bad, they won't load. Yeah, I think so. Just Multiple lightning strikes force the crew to flee the metal grain loader. Mate, if this, if this rain keeps up the way it is, not going to load here. It is raining non-stop. There's nothing driver Gavin can do but wait. Everything's going against us. Uh, I'm just about to ring you to say we're on, uh, 
now I'm going to start landing in there in a second. Finally, a break in the weather. We'll go while we can, eh? It's a rush to get the loading finished between storm bursts. Once they get going, we could load these 18 and probably... Right, bring them back to the uh, and a half. Right, mate, coming back over. Red light there, boys. Next wagon. Red light there. At last, everything's going to plan. Grain is flowing and the new lids are working. Yeah, we should get out by 1130. What do you reckon, Ads? Another hour for these? Yeah, mate, we should, um, yeah, shouldn't be a worry, weather permitting. It'll stop raining for a while now, so hopefully we get another hour or so of good weather and we should nearly be able to finish the train. But these are old coal wagons converted to carry grain. No one knows if this imaginative refit will work. There's a wagon door that's open, not even half a mil, just a little bit of grain coming out of it. You don't like to see spilt grain on the line at all. Uh, um, obviously there may be a bit, of, a bit of rubbish caught in the bottom of the wagon. Hey Tom, yeah. take a forward next wagon, see if it settles. Yeah. Each wagon of wheat is worth over $10,000. Now, every wagon that's been loaded is leaking. So what's coming out of all of them? So far it has been. So it's coming out of that one now. It's only a gap about that, that big, not close, but probably is about a about a mill gap and yeah the grain's just coming through. Should have been fixed. Should have been, been fixed for grain. So there's no more air left in it? Nah, nothing. Hold it in. Gavin's day is turning from bad to worse. Even if he can fix the doors, the grain spill must be cleaned up before they leave. Ah! It's all closed. Yeah, it's all closed. Hey, Fergo. Yeah, they, these bottom doors made a leak and grain. At the moment, there's two wheelbarrow loads underneath one wagon. If Gavin can't solve the problem fast, SSR's $1.2 million revolutionary wagon retool looks like it's about to go down as a fail. Ah, this is getting on my nerves, I tell you.